What's going on guys and welcome back to the Edison Club. I'm your host Mike and today we're going to be discussing a video that was uploaded either earlier this week or late last week by the famous Yugi tuber Your Yu-Gi-Oh channel. And basically in this video he goes on to elaborate about how he's getting divorced because of Yu-Gi-Oh. So that's a topic that is really hits home for me. Um, and I really just want to reach out basically and show him that he has support. He has people that have been in his shoes before. So before we get started with that, as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe. It really just motivates me to keep going, getting better at the game as well as content creation. Also, while you're here, head on down to this video's description and follow the links that I have posted there to the other Edison format content creators. Odds are, if you like what I make, you'll like what they make as well. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get into this discussion. So I'm gonna give you a brief backstory of my abusive relationship that I was in for a little over three years, close to four years. Just for some context, it's kind of so you guys know where I'm coming from. So from 2017 up until the very end of 2020, so a little, yeah, like a little over three years, I was in a very abusive relationship. I was not allowed to play Yu-Gi-Oh, talk about Yu-Gi-Oh, have friends that had anything to do with Yu-Gi-Oh. Basically was just forced to give all of that up and just, stop doing it. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh was such a big part of my life and it was very similar to how um, the, the gentleman in your Yu-Gi-Oh channel, um, how he described his situation was you start seeing this person and they immediately do not like that you play cards. They immediately just want nothing to do with it. They want to just shut you down and not let you do it. And they kind of choose to phrase things in such a way as like what he said was don't you want to do something better with your life, like go to school or get a better job and stuff like that? And in the beginning, it can kind of be hard to see if that's actually truthfully a red flag or not, because there have been times in my life where I kind of needed someone to tell me that because I, I did play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh uh, in my life, especially my dad died in 2014. And that was all I wanted to do at that time was just play Yu-Gi-Oh. And I do a trade for work, I do upholstery, and oftentimes I find myself thinking about what if I had just started doing this 10 years ago? You know, where would I be? How different would life look for me uh, if I hadn't wasted so much time just playing Yu Gi Oh? And the reality of that is that if I didn't have Yu Gi Oh, the community, the hobby is something to occupy my mind and keep me going, I probably wouldn't even be here to be honest with you, from all the dark times that I went to, went through with my dad's passing and everything that has to do with that, Yu-Gi-Oh got me through that. Now, there's not to say I don't have some regrets. You know, maybe I could have managed my time a little bit more efficiently, learned how to do a trade like plumbing or electrical work or heating and air or something on the side in addition to playing as much Yu-Gi-Oh as I played. But Yu-Gi-Oh got me to where I am in my life right now, filming this in my own home. You know, my wife is in the other room, I have four pets, I have a child on the way. My life has truthfully never been more full. Um, and so in that video, you know, he kind of goes and talks about how she didn't like him playing Yu-Gi-Oh! So he just said, okay, I'll stop. I'll, uh, I'll stop playing. And I fell into that exact same trap. I didn't touch Yu-Gi-Oh! from 2017, like the summer of 2017, up until like the summer of 2020. So I'll, I'll skip past and um, not tell you all the boring details about everything that I went through in that relationship. But the day I decided I wanted to start playing Yu-Gi-Oh again was when I had found out that Thunder Dragons were actually a good deck. And I've, I've never had any kind of attachment to Thunder Dragon. I really don't know why this really just wanted to make me come back and start playing again. Maybe it's just because it was something I never expected. Like Thunder Dragon was primarily a goat card used to fuel light and that was it. So when I started reading the cards, I was like, man, this is so cool. And like Thunder Dragon Colossus, this card's so crazy. So I buy cards, I start playtesting online and she hates everything that there is to do with it. Doesn't, is completely just unsupportive of me, doesn't want to talk about it, uh, will ignore me for days at a time because I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! all kinds of just toxic behavior. And eventually, because um, at this point, like I'm not actually going to tournaments, I'm just playing on Dueling Book and like with friends and stuff like that. One day I tell her, I'm gonna start going to tournaments again. And the first thing she says is, no, you're not. And I was like, well, 
The last time I checked, I wasn't asking. I'm telling you I'm going to start going to tournaments again, and you can either like it or you cannot like it, but regardless, I'm going to start going, so this is when I'm going, and I'll see you when I get back. That was exactly how I phrased it. She sat there and never said anything. She was completely dumbfounded. So sometimes people in your life, that doesn't matter if it's a woman or if it's a man or if it's a friend or a parent, they develop this kind of power and this control over you to where they can pout or they can be sad or whatever and completely just put on an act to essentially make you behave exactly how they want you to behave and do the things they want you to do and keep you from doing the things they don't want you to do. So as men, I feel like all of us at some point have been through something like that, which is exactly what he's going through. And he said that he did end up giving all this stuff up. He sold his YouTube channel, he sold all of his cards, all of his filming equipment, all to go and fulfill um, this dream. Not necessarily a dream, I guess, to go to try to get a better, a better life, going to school, get a, a better job and everything like that. And he goes on to talk about the struggles of going to school. And I'm, I'm not a school person. I struggled very much in school, all through like middle school, high school. Uh, it's, it's a thousand wonders that I made it through, honestly. I've never been a book smart person in my entire life. Probably never will be, but never needed it. You know, I can go, I can install a bathroom fan. I can fix a toilet. I can hang a TV on the wall. I can fix my car. You know, not everyone learns the same way. Not everyone's creative in the same way. It's like, I'm, I'm not a sit at a desk all day person. I'm a let's go turn wrenches kind of person. And that's okay because if everyone was the same, the world would be very, very boring. So he goes on to say like he would just keep failing in school and everything like that. And he just wasn't having the fulfillment. He was missing uh, being a street performer who's a musician. Um, and I'm not sure. I think his name is... Jaspith? I'm sorry. That's not right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm sorry. Um, your Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. That's how I will address him here. Uh, I know his last name is Clark. Um, if you're watching this video, you actually recorded a small video of me at a Philly Regional in 2015. And that was back when I was extremely camera shy. I did not have a YouTube channel. I really didn't record anything at all. And it was so cool to meet you because you were someone that I had watched all of your videos. He made like kind of like Vine style, like Yu-Gi-Oh meme videos and stuff like that. Like the, the ones I primarily watched was this segment called Yu-Gi-Oh Players Be Like, and it would have like a scene from a movie or TV show. But we actually met there, don't know if you remember that, super cool guy and just so full of life. I walked by, saw him playing his instrument, I think it was a trumpet, um, in the downtown in Philadelphia. It was so cool, so cool, man. But yeah, he's a musician and he had to kind of give all of that up uh, to try to just go and pursue like a normal life. No more Yu-Gi-Oh, no more anything. And eventually he gets to the point to where he talks about that his wife wanted him to actually go and get a hobby. And this is where you kind of get like this double standard here. So he says, okay, I'll start playing Yu-Gi-Oh again. And it, I went through the same thing. It's so scary how similar the situations were because the girl I was with at the time told me I needed a hobby. So I'm like, great, I'll start playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, not Yu-Gi-Oh, anything but Yu-Gi-Oh. So I start bowling of all things. I just tried to think of something, you know, just, just bowling here and there. And eventually it gets to the point where, oh, you're bowling too much. You're doing too much. You need to stop. You need to cut back. And I'm like, I'm going every other week. How is that too much? In, in what world is bowling two games on a Sunday for, for like two hours every other Sunday, in what world is that too much? And little by little, like just pieces of sand that I picked up over time, and one day I look over and I have a sand castle, and I'm like, I understand what this is. It doesn't matter if it's Yu-Gi-Oh, or if it's bowling, or if it's golfing, or if it's fixing cars, or cooking, whatever. Eventually, all things will just become the same, right? She didn't want me to do anything. She didn't want me to be independent. She didn't want me to have friends and hobbies and stuff because she didn't have any of that. She didn't want that. And he says in that video, something very similar. He started making videos again and his wife basically tells him, you're doing it too much, you need to stop, you need to cut back. I don't understand why you have to do so much with these cards. And he, he gives the example of saying that he, he thought that maybe she thought it was like Uno, where like every game is the same. And for someone that doesn't understand Yu-Gi-Oh, I always tell them so, like most people have some idea of like the concept of how to play chess, right? These pieces can move these pieces, these, this direction, this way, they can back up. These are the rules. They've been the same for however long chess has existed, right? So you take a game like chess that is as standardized as chess is, right? But you add the twist on it where every month 
the rook, which can move uh, any number of spaces, one uh, in straight lines, right? Um, instead of doing that, now the rook can move across the whole table, the whole board, as many times as it wants to. And the knight can move um, in, in an X pattern, and the queen can't move at all. That's like trying to explain Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, because it, the game is constantly evolving. It's constantly changing. You have to keep absorbing new information. You have to play more. You have to research more. And then just when you think you're caught up, a new set comes out and then you have to start all over again, especially if it's like a very impactful set or something like a structure deck, like the branded structure deck um, was such like a shell shock to me when that deck came out because it changes everything. So she had a hard time understanding that, therefore just wanted him to basically stop doing it again. And that video, guys, as you can see from, from everything that we've talked about today has really hit home to me. And I made this video for everyone uh, because there are a lot of people out there that are in situations like what he's going through, like what I went through. And I just want to leave you with this, that the person that you're with, your partner, needs to support you in everything that you do in the same way that you need to be able to support them in everything that you do. Now there's there's obviously caveats to everything. So, you know, if it's your if it's your 10th wedding anniversary, you probably shouldn't be going to a YCS, you know, like unless she's 100% cool like you guys are going to make a trip out of that. That's a different case. But you probably shouldn't leave your wife at home by herself on your 10th wedding anniversary to go play cards, right? Like that's not what I mean by that at all. My wife is incredibly supportive of me playing cards. She knew from the very beginning that it was something that was very important to me, cards, my YouTube channel. And she's always supported me. She's pushed me to go out and go to tournaments and keep grinding and keeping and keep making videos. And there are some nights where I come home and I'm like, well, I have a podcast at eight o'clock tonight. I'm sorry. And she's like, oh, I'll just miss you. You know, please get it done so we can hang out. You know, and she's always been so supportive. I have the greatest wife in the entire world. I'm so thankful for her uh, that we are where we are because that's another thing that kind of like branches off into our next topic is that if the person that you're with now doesn't support you, doesn't push you to achieve your goals, what's important to you and understand what's important to you, then there's someone else out there that will, you know, you just haven't found the right person yet. Like there will come a time where you can keep up this like facade for a while of like not playing Yu-Gi-Oh or not golfing or not making videos, whatever. Right. And then there will come a time where you will eventually wake up one day, you will look at them and you will say, all right, is it you or is it me? And you should probably always pick yourself. Um, your happiness is important. We're here for a very uh, small uh, span of time in the grand scheme of things. You need to be able to enjoy life, uh, live life to the fullest, enjoy everything. Um, and, you know, I started this channel in 2021. It was originally called Dark Magical Gaming, and I was back when I was playing advanced format, and I played the Dark Magician deck. And I never made this channel with any kind of intentions of really gaining subscribers or getting money from it or building a fan base, whatever. I basically just wanted an archive of trips and adventures that I went on throughout the course of me playing Yu-Gi-Oh! to be able to look back on one day and say, wow, like I forgot about this guy or wow, I forgot about this trip or that deck was really cool. That was such a fun time. And it kind of just snowballed into what I have now which I'm still a very small channel in the grand scheme of things. You know, we're almost to 3000, but you know, the people really have supported me and taken me this far. And I still have such a long way to go, but I can't imagine like giving all this up and just saying, okay, I'm done. Um, I love making videos. I love making content. And I'm so thankful that I have someone in my life that supports me doing that. So everyone that's watching and especially for your Yu-Gi-Oh channel, Things will get better. Focus on yourself. Take time to get yourself back where you need to be. Find your happiness. Focus on that. Focus on your goals. If it's playing Yu-Gi-Oh, winning a YCS, if it's making content, if it's being a good musician, stuff like that, just keep, keep setting goals for yourself and keep moving up and everything you want, you'll get it in time. Just remember that you're the main character of your story and that you have survived 100% of your worst days. So just, just continue fighting. So that's about all I have for you guys today. Um, I'm filming this on Thursday. 
Uh, I have a video with Eric Shen from Sack Phase, which we're gonna be doing the Value Redemption uh, here to go film in like another 30, 45 minutes. So that's gonna be a really fun video. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys for watching. This is Mike from the Edison Club signing out. I love you all. Take care.